This is according to students, of course, with some reporting being spiked by injection, which, of course, we just spoke about there. Lucy, thank you very much for your time. It's brilliant to have you on the show and have your input. Well, I think I can guess, really, but just tell our viewers, why do you want to boycott the clubs? Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm not sure that um, we've seen a rise in it. I think what, what I've learned most about kind of hearing from, from girls, um, not just in Leeds, but kind of up and down the UK, um, is that it's something that's been an issue for years and years and years, really ever since um, kind of rave culture started. I've had girls... Um, message in and say that nothing's changed in seven years, ten years since they left uni, um, specifically in Leeds. Um, and so it's not just an issue that we're seeing arising now, but it's something that's kind of, you know, the, the nightlife industry has been saturated with for for many, many years now. What's more sinister, however, is the rise in, in spiking by needle, um, which you mentioned earlier. Um, that's something that's fairly new and that's obviously a lot harder to protect against. It's my stomach, really, for obvious reasons, but it's, it, it, I read the story today, I kind of really actually first became aware of it today, and I, I was absolutely shocked, and that's why we're covering it on the show. Just talk me through about, uh, uh, about this. Do, do, you, do you know people that this has happened to? I mean, one would have thought you get searched by a bouncer on the way in, you know, maybe you'll sometimes check the inside of your wallet, don't they? I would have thought they might find a needle. Oh, for sure. I think this is, this is what's so scary. It's terrifying, really. Um about the rise in spiking by needles because it's a lot harder to protect against. Um, personally, I set up the account in tandem with the Girls Night In initiative that was started in Edinburgh. Um, the night before, two of my really close friends had been sexually assaulted and um, I was kind of feeling very helpless about it. So a lot of people do um, when they've had contact with it themselves, but if they know someone. Um, and so it was set up in response to that, really, first and foremost, um, raising awareness of the boycott that's taking place um, nationally up and down the country um, in university cities from Dundee to Southampton. Um, and, yeah, it's, it's, it's completely terrifying. Um, yeah. It's completely terrifying. Do you, uh, and presumably it's very, very difficult to guard against unless you find the needle, because... I mean, you might not feel it. I imagine that most people don't feel it, actually, uh, at the time, potentially. And yeah. then, then it's too late, you know. You, I don't know how long it takes for some of this stuff to kick in. And, I mean, this is... So, basically, I think my point is, is, is it's very difficult to get the perpetrator, I would have thought. For sure. Um, I think, that, you know, that there has been a rise in needle spiking, but I think there is a wider issue around the way that spiking is dealt with um, in nightclubs in general. Um, and I think what the, the boycott is falling calling for is not necessarily um, to harm nightclubs revenue rather to kind of raise awareness to how the issue is dealt with I think at the moment there's no coherent protocol um, with how to deal with spiking in nightclubs um, what we've had some suggestions and people are suggesting um, staff that are dealing with people that are putting themselves in potentially vulnerable situations in nightclubs need to be properly trained um, and briefed in how to deal with what's a potentially fatal assault. Um, uh, they need to be kind of briefed on the severity of it and how to deal with it really sensitively. We've had girls come in and say that they went to bouncers for help um, and were kind of laughed at and kind of told they were too drunk and then, you know, chucked out of nightclubs. Um, and then obviously in, in positions where they're too incoherent to pick up their phones and, and call for help. And what happens then after, after that is, yeah.